Today I'll be solving this following system of linear congruences in modular arithmetic. So we have 4x is congruent to 5 modulo 7 and 3x is congruent to 4 modulo 11. Okay. We've got 4x congruent to 5 modulo 7. And now since 4 and 7 are co-prime, so since GCD of 4 and 7 is equal to 1, then there exists an inverse of 4 in modulo 7. And since 7 is quite a small number, we could manually test the val some values to see what the inverse is. So what we see is 1, uh, if you test 1, it doesn't work as the inverse, but if you test 2, you get 4 times 2 equals 8, which is congruent to 1 modulo 7. And this means 2 must be the inverse of, the inverse of 4 is congruent to 2 modulo 7. And this means you can multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So 2 times 4x is congruent to 2 times 5, which is congruent to 10, which is congruent to 3 mod 7. And now we have, so 2 times 4 is congruent to 1 mod 7, so this just becomes x is congruent to 3 mod 7. Okay, now let's have a look at the second equation. 3x is congruent to 4 mod 11. And again, similar to earlier, we can try to find the inverse of 3 modulo 11. So if you test the numbers 1, 2, and 3, you see it doesn't work as the inverse. So if we go up to 4, then 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and this is congruent to 1 mod 11. So it turns out the inverse of 3 is congruent to 4 mod 11. And just from earlier, you can also see that the inverse exists, again, because GCD of 3 and 11 is equal to 1. Now if you multiply both sides of the equation by 4, we get, so 4 times 3x is congruent to 4 times 4 mod 11, and 4 times 3 is congruent to 1, so that cancels out. So x is congruent to 4 times 4, which is 16, and that's the same as 5 mod 11. Okay, so that means the two equations are equivalent to x congruent to 3 mod 7 and also x is congruent to 5 mod 11. Now we have two simultaneous equations just with x on the left hand side. And now we can see since, since 7 and 11 are co-prime, it is guaranteed by the Chinese remainder theorem. Chinese remainder theorem it's guaranteed there is a unique solution for x in modulo 7 times 11 equals 77. There is a unique solution for x modulo 77. So x can be any multiple of 77 plus a fixed number. And to see what the actual solution is, since x is congruent to 3 mod 7, we can write x is equal to 7k plus 3 for some k integer. Okay, and now we can substitute this into the second equation. So we get 7k plus 3 is congruent to 5 mod 11. And this means 7k is congruent to 2 mod 11. And again, GCD of 7 and 11 equals 1, so the inverse, seven ex uh, inverse of 7 exists, mod 11. So we can again search for what the inverse is. And if we test some values out, so 1 doesn't work, 2 doesn't work, uh, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work. Let's try 8. 7 times 8 is equal to 56, which is congruent to 1 mod 11, because 55 is divisible by 11. 
so 8 is the inverse of 7 now that means we can do we can multiply both sides by 8 and 16 is congruent to 5 mod 11 and this means 8 times 7 becomes 1 so k is 5 mod 11 this means we can write k as 11 m plus 5 where m is an integer so if we substitute k's 11 m plus 5 into the value this uh, expression for x we get x is 7 times 11 m plus 5 plus 3 and this is equal to 77 m plus 38 so this shows the general solution for x The general solution for x will be x is congruent to 38 mod 77 and this is a unique solution modulo 77 that was guaranteed by the chinese remainder theorem okay so that means x is 38 mod 77 so back in the original congruence the general solution so you can write it as x equals 77 m plus 38 where m is an integer, or you can write x congruent to 38 mod 77. So that's two different ways of describing the solution. Okay, so that concludes this video. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.